Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we have quite a lot to go through. We have some news on Tesla's vehicles, some new tweets from Elon Musk, some on competition from the Lucid Air, Tesla Energy, and then we'll touch on Tesla stock as well. So a lot to go through. We'll get right into it, but I do have an announcement first. I will be on vacation tomorrow and Monday. I'm going to do my best to actually not work on this vacation. Hopefully the hour and 15 minute long episode from yesterday makes up for that if you haven't had a chance to watch that yet. Big Tesla news always seems to happen when I am on vacation, so I'm sure we'll see something. Maybe we'll see an S&P 500 inclusion tomorrow night. That would seem to be par for the course, but at least if that were the case, I think we have pretty much done all that we can to prepare for that and understand it. All right, so a quick check-in on the stock. Finished up 4.6% today to $1,621 per share. That is the second highest close for Tesla stock all time, and Tesla is now up 18% since the stock split announcement two days ago. I did want to quickly follow up on a couple of questions I've received about the stock split. The most common question seems to be what happens between the stockholder of record date on August 21st, which will each receive a dividend of four additional shares, and then the distribution date after the close of trading on August 28th. Now, I'm not certain on this. I'm still waiting for confirmation from Tesla's investor relations team on it, but I do believe, based on the reading that I have done, that any sale of Tesla stock during that period of time would be attached to essentially a due bill for those four additional shares that would be received for the dividend. So in effect, basically there's no difference. If you own the share on the 21st and you decide to sell it on, let's say the 25th, you would sell that one share for whatever the price is at that time, let's say $1,600 per share. But when August 28th comes, the four shares that were tied to that share will be due to the person that you sold that share to. So those four shares will just carry forward to them. Your brokerage will take care of that. You're obviously not gonna just be able to pocket four free shares. I think all that most of us need to know is that on August 31st, the stock will be one-fifth the price, options positions will be one-fifth the value, and everyone will have five times as many shares or contracts. I've also seen a lot of confusion around the dividend language that Tesla used in the stock split announcement. I would note that this is the overarching category of this transaction is a stock split. The way that the stock split is being accomplished is through dividends, so I think there's a parent-child relationship there. It's not just a normal stock dividend because a normal stock dividend would actually give you value. A stock split dividend does not. Again, that's just my own understanding and I am still hoping to get some confirmation on that, but I think that does make common sense. All right, getting into the Tesla news, we're gonna start off in China. We had a report from Tesmanian, I believe a couple days back, that quote, according to the China National Enterprise Credit Information Publicity System, Tesla has established an insurance brokerage limited company with a 50 million yuan register capital in China, end quote. So that's about $7.2 million that translates to in terms of the registered capital. I haven't had any luck to see how that compares with Tesla's insurance business in the United States. If anybody can track that down, please share it and I'll try to pin it in the comments if I do see it. But I think this is obviously a pretty exciting step. We heard Elon Musk and Zach Kirkhorn talk extensively about the insurance business on the last earnings call, with Musk notably saying that they're looking for revolutionary actuaries to join Tesla to build a major insurance company within Tesla. I think the insurance side of the business has probably been underrepresented by me and my coverage, largely because I think of it as being something that is just going to lower the cost of ownership for vehicle owners, so I kind of just price it in that way. Essentially, I think of it as further vertical integration for Tesla to provide cost savings and significantly improve the value proposition to customers, which is one reason of many that I'm very confident that Tesla can capture such a large market share. It's the little things like this that are often overlooked when people talk about Tesla's competition. It's really easy to compare range or compare costs, but you just have to factor in all of these other things, like the fact that Tesla is profitable building only electric vehicles, autopilot, the supercharger network, Tesla's service centers, even though people sometimes don't have the best experiences with them, at least they do exist, Tesla's mobile service fleet. You can add Tesla insurance to that list, it just goes on and on. And as far as I know, within the next year, Tesla will be the only automaker making electric vehicles in North America, Europe, and Asia. So yes, maybe right now Xpeng has a lower entry cost in China, but first of all, they're not profitable, and then second of all, they're not going to be able to provide that type of pricing internationally. All right, sort of drifting back to yesterday's topic, but I did want to at least address that because I didn't address Tesla insurance yesterday. I do think it's an extremely exciting business. The move here to establish a company to hopefully eventually offer the service in China is exciting. And as Zach joked on the last call, they always get the quarterly Tesla insurance call from retail investors on say. So this may actually be a good reason to ask about that again for Q3. All right, next up, we have some news on the Model Y. Holmars on Twitter tweeted, quote, the single piece casting machine for Model Y has been installed in Fremont. 
Shanghai and Berlin will also use single-piece casting, end quote. And Elon replied to that this morning, saying, quote, Will be amazing to see it in operation. Biggest casting machine ever made. Will make rear body in a single piece, including crash rails, end quote. Even though he doesn't directly confirm it, Elon's reply to this tweet would imply that the casting machine has indeed been installed. We've heard Elon talk about the casting process for the Model Y a lot. We knew this machine was coming. Elon actually talked about it on Tesla's second quarter earnings call, saying that because it was new technology, obviously going from the 70 pieces of stamped metal to the two-piece casting for the Model Y, was proving to be tricky to maintain the production rates and to keep growing the production rates for the Model Y, because on top of the two-piece casting, they also had about half a dozen other parts added on after that casting, and he said all of that would be transitioning to this one-piece casting, which he said he's super excited about. So hopefully that transition process is happening right now with that installation seemingly being completed, and hopefully that improves on some of the problems that they have had so far with the two-piece casting process, and production rates can grow for the Model Y, as well as costs coming down. One other tweet here from Elon that I did want to highlight, this one came in reply on Monday to a story about how Elon acted during Tesla's initial roadshow for the IPO when Tesla came public back in 2010. The story mentioned how Elon was unusual in the fact that he wore jeans to those meetings, most people did not, and the story had a photo of Elon wearing those jeans, as well as a plaid jacket on top of a gingham pattern shirt, which is a somewhat unusual look. Elon teased himself for that and then said he was trying to channel Herb Tarlick from a fictional TV show, WKRP, and then shared a photo of that character wearing a pretty much all plaid outfit with Elon saying, quote, one day soon I will wear this outfit, end quote. So obviously people have picked up on that and assume that Elon is teasing something about the plaid powertrain for Model S and Model X. Obviously there's been a lot of speculation on that tied into Battery Day. So I did want to point that out, Elon could easily be teasing something about that, but it was also very relevant to this conversation. I think the context is important because I think it makes it somewhat less likely it wasn't like Elon just randomly started a new thread saying this, but the timing is of course very interesting to speculate on. Alright, next up we have some updates to Tesla's destination charging program. In the past, they have actually offered to cover the cost of installation for these charging stations for businesses as long as the businesses would then cover the cost of the electricity being used by these charging stations. Per Electric, Tesla has updated their destination charging stations and with that enabled some new features that they say are coming soon to this program. So the most important one of that to me is quote, reimbursement, opt in to charge users a fair price for the electricity they use when charging, end quote. Although this maybe seems a little bit less exciting for customers initially, I think what this does is it enables more adoption from businesses that are maybe hesitant to cover the cost of that electricity, giving them the option to pass on those variable costs if they wish to should allow even fewer barriers to entry for greater expansion of charging stations like this. So yes, you may have to pay for it, but if the availability is more widespread, it's probably worth paying for, as long as the rates are not exorbitant, which Tesla does specify here would be for a fair price. Hopefully that would be something below the pricing for superchargers. This also has the potential to be very impactful for multifamily environments or more residential type of destination chargers, which would generally need to accommodate some sort of payment or metering process. If this handles that, it should be huge for adoption. All right, sticking with vehicles here for a second, and then we do have a bit more news for Tesla to wrap up with, but I did want to talk a little bit about Lucid Motors. They have been in the news over the last couple of days because they tested their new luxury sedan, the Lucid Air, and got a 517 mile range out of it on the EPA test cycle, though it was not an official EPA test. Lucid is not in production yet, so this was obviously not a production vehicle, but I would imagine the production vehicle will perform similarly. Lucid has been publicizing this range a lot. In general, they tend to stay more under the radar, so I don't think they would be heavily publicizing something if they did not expect to achieve that with the production version. So for some more context here, that would be 115 miles more than the 402 mile range on the EPA test cycle for the long range plus Model S, or about 28.5%. However, the Lucid Air does have a larger battery pack than the Model S. Lucid has not released the exact size of the battery yet, but they have said that it will be under 130 kilowatt hours. The Model S pack obviously around 100 kilowatt hours, so we're probably looking at 20 to 30% more energy capacity for the Lucid that is enabling this range but it still looks like a pretty impressive performance. Bloomberg and Car and Driver did their own testing of the ranges for the Lucid Air versus the Model S. Bloomberg's test was mostly 70 miles per hour, and then to finally drain the battery, they continued around a track for a little bit, 
and they also had air conditioning on in all the vehicles they tested, they were able to get 355 miles out of the long range Model S and 456 out of the Lucid Air. So a similar 28% more range from the Lucid Air in Bloomberg's testing, just like the 28% variance between the Model S's EPA range and this estimate EPA range from the Lucid Air. So even with that larger pack, it does look like a pretty efficient package from Lucid, but at least initially this is going to be more of a luxury vehicle, higher cost. From Bloomberg, quote, the company says the Air will cost around $150,000, but has yet to announce final pricing, end quote. Though over time, Lucid does intend to introduce lower end options for the Air. So obviously if Tesla wanted to, they could make the Model S go 515 plus miles if they were to add more battery capacity and at the cost that Tesla is likely securing batteries at, that could probably be accomplished for anywhere between $3,000 and $5,000 additional cost of goods sold, meaning Tesla could maintain the same margins and probably price that around $85,000. So pretty good numbers from Lucid, also not necessarily a threat to Tesla, but I think Lucid has sort of the right strategy to focus more on the luxury market, which Tesla is not quite as interested in. So there's definitely some opportunity there for Lucid to capture. And just for some background, Lucid has been around. Their founding was in 2007. Their CEO is Peter Rawlinson, who was the chief engineer for the Model S. And like I said, they've been relatively under the radar so far. So I do think they sort of get it. They're already working on their factory. They expect to start production later this year. And quote, executives say customers can now expect delivery of the first batch of airs in spring 2021. End quote. The full unveil for the Lucid Air will happen on September 9th. All right, shifting back to Tesla then, we do have a couple stories here quickly on Tesla Energy. The first is on the Hornsdale Battery Project in South Australia. Remember, this was one of the first big Tesla Energy projects and originally was 129 megawatt hours, now has been expanded to 194 megawatt hours. Anyway, Renew Economy and Tesla Roddy have reported that earlier this week, Tesla performed a test flipping from charging to discharging. So charging at 120 megawatts, the full capacity, and then immediately discharging at 150 megawatts, so a 270 megawatt difference in power in total, which Renew Economy claims is likely a world record in both speed and extent of change in power. That instantaneous reaction is something that is not possible with a fossil fuel plant, so that additional speed of reacting to changing needs is beneficial, as well as the improved accuracy and flexibility provided by such a system. That is then paired with Tesla's auto bidder software, which maximizes the value for Tesla and for the customer by keeping energy prices low. So overall, nice to see continued success from that project, and it's serving as a proving ground for other projects of that type. The other news on Tesla Energy, which is really just more of an FYI, is that there have been some certified Powerwall installers that have posted on Reddit that they have been told by Tesla that they would not receive any new Powerwalls until 2021 due to a shortage of Powerwalls. So obviously coming from Reddit, Take it for what it's worth, and obviously Tesla could just be reprioritizing to another installer versus this particular person, but I did want to at least pass it along, and it is evidence of a demand constraint on the power wall. No surprise there. All right, next up, I want to talk a little bit about Tesla's talent pool. As we have talked about, they've already started hiring for Giga Texas, and over the weekend, Jerome Guillen, Tesla's president of automotive, tagged onto a post on LinkedIn by Tesla's global director of supply chain management, emphasizing the fact that Tesla was hiring by saying, quote, Giga Texas is happening full speed, lots of job openings. Matt is a great leader and is looking for supply chain experts for large scale construction. Please apply if you are interested, feel qualified and want to embrace the project of a lifetime, end quote. So not much to add to that, just wanted to point it out and I guess say that 2021 is gonna be awesome. Over the last couple of days, Tesla has also started advertising on their Weibo account in China that they are hiring for their China Design Center. Tesla continues to emphasize their blank slate approach with the China Design Center. The ad in a translated quote saying, quote, creativity is up to you. There is no formula for planning. Everything is created by you, end quote. Tesla lists 11 different open positions from design manager or senior car designer to copywriter and design quality specialist. Last thing on Tesla talent here, and I would take this with a grain of salt, but the website teamblind.com, which is apparently an anonymous professional network with 3.6 million verified users, recently asked their users a question. Do you dread work when you wake up in the morning? From their 2,000 responses, which seems pretty low to me if they have 3.6 million verified users, but from those 2,000, 56% did say that they dread work, though I would imagine if this question is optional, there's probably some selection bias if people dread work, they're probably more likely to respond to a question like this. But setting aside all those caveats, 
of the major companies that seemingly had enough responses here and from what it looks like i think tesla only had 14 responses but again setting that aside tesla came in third least likely to be dreaded at 43 percent just above cisco at i think 42 percent and wayfair at 30 percent facebook vmware and oracle topped the list at around 73 to 75 percent amazon pretty high up there at around 68 percent as well so just something interesting out there that I thought maybe other people would be interested in as well. I think I found that posted on the Tesla Motors Club's forum or something like that. Again, not putting a lot of weight into it, but at least Tesla showing up at the bottom versus at the top. All right, I think that is everything. So that will wrap it up for today and again for the week since I'm off tomorrow and on Monday. I hope everybody has an awesome weekend. Thank you as always for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you again next week for the Tuesday, August 18th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.